Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today's build is going to be a 1 to 75 leveling guide that's going to take you from Rogue to Blade Dancer and doing lots of poison damage. We're going to be running dual daggers for that poison chance that a weapon's a choice passive. We're going to have Acid Flask going off, we're going to have Shift proccing it, we're going to have Shurikens going off with lots of poison chance orbiting around us. We're going to have Decoy to kind of give us some protection, building into tons of dodge so that we have good survivability. So we'll be stacking our resistances, the dodge, and of course, health. By the time we get to level 75, you should be just speed running through Echoes. And then of course, if you want to transition into a different build, a different Blade Dancer build, you can. If not, this build will take you all the way to level 100 and it will still be doing really well even at the empowered content and when your character reaches that level 100. As usual, we'll have all of the timestamps below for all the breakdown points so that you can see exactly where I put my passive, where I put my skill points. I'm going to show you all of that. There'll be a written guide where it will be written out with screenshots and, of course, a build planner for each one of those stages so you can see exactly what I was wearing, exactly where my skills were, where my passives were, and where my character progression was at that point. So let's go ahead and get into it. Alright travelers, we're now level 4, we have about 130 health, we don't have much for resistance, haven't found any gear yet, and we get our first specialization slot, so we're going to go ahead and throw shurikens into the mix. And for shurikens we're going to build into the blade shield first, we're going to want it spinning around us, then we're going to build into the pierce chance so it can get lots of hits, and as we get our poison chance up it's going to be stacking lots and lots of poison. So the very first point is going to go into alacrity. And then for passives, we've got two passive points. Going to go ahead and throw both of them into Guile. And that's going to give us some dodge rating for extra survivability early, as well as some poison resistance, even though we won't run into much poison early on. But we're going to go ahead and build into that first. That's going to be it. I'll see you guys at level 9 when we specialize the second skill.
All right, travelers, I am now level 9. We have just over 200 health. We're starting to get our resistance up. We got a little bit of void, a little bit of poison, a little bit of elemental. Right now, void's going to be the most important. We got a little bit of armor. We are trying to build into dodge a bit, as dodge is going to help us survive a lot as this character, and it's going to be really easy for us to build into that. For skills, we got three more points for shurikens. We're going to throw two more into Alacrity. And then one point into Thin Shurikens for the extra projectiles, which leaves us on the next point to be able to get the Blade Shield. This is going to be the most important for applying lots and lots of poison. Once we get that, we'll want the duration and both the Pierce Chance so they don't disappear right off the bat. For our second skill, we have Acid Flask. As you can see, I got a second level. I did have a plus one level on chest piece for the Acid Flask fall already. You probably won't have that, but the very first point you're going to want here is just the Caustic Concoction. But if you got lucky like me, you can go ahead and throw two points in there. We're going to be building into the Poison Pools right off the bat to get a lot of that Poison Chance, a lot of the Poison Shred. We're going to get all that right off the bat, and it's going to last for a little duration. So after we shift and proc it, a lot of the enemies will run into it when we get all that, all that toxicity going. And then for passives, we got six more points. We're going to throw three of them into Guile. Then we're going to throw one into Twin Blades so we can get dual wielding unlocked. We're going to be wearing two daggers for this. So once we get the weapons of choice, you'll have a bunch of extra poison chance. And then we got two more points. We're going to throw both of them into Evasion. This is going to give us a lot more dodge and we'll take less damage while moving as we will be trying to move at all times by shifting and throwing Acid Blast while we kite. That's going to be it for this update. I'll see you guys at about level 12 when we do one more update before our third specialization slot.
All right, travelers, we're now level 12. We are working towards getting our resistances up. We haven't got much for any necrotic or physical. Void is still kind of the primary thing we're going for. We've got about 15% armor. We're still working on dodge. That's going to get a little bit higher here once we put our passives in. Um, getting that up to about 30 to 40% is really going to help a lot with the projectiles that you face from the void. Then for skills, we got one more point for shurikens. We're going to go ahead and throw it into the blade shield so they'll now spin around us for that three second duration. They don't have poison chance yet, but what's going to be nice about them is once we get the poison pulls going on the shurik or on the acid flask, it's going to allow us to have poison chance. And then once we get more poison chance inside of our passive, we're going to get a lot of poison going with those shurikens. So by the time we build into the pierce and the extended duration on them, we're going to get a lot of poison going. Then we'll get the extra projectiles and the extra damage that we get from the projectiles is obviously going to be more stacks of poison. For Acid Flask, we got three more points. All three of these points are going to be spent on the left side of the tree. We've got one for Contamination, one point for Poison Pulls, and then one point for Hydrochloric Acid. This is going to now give us a cooldown, so we don't have to just spam it all the time. We're going to be doing the Poison Pulls, which the duration for that will last for four seconds. So we're going to be able to stack that since we can cast it every two seconds. That's going to poison enemies every second that they're in the poison. And then it's also going to give us global poison chance so that we can poison enemies with our shurikens that are spinning around us while we are in that pool as well. And then for passives, we got three more points. All three points are going into evasion to up that dodge raging, which now puts us just a bit higher at 21%. And we'll continue to build into that as dodge will be our main form besides cap resistances for defense on this build. All right, I'll see you guys at level 19 for that third specialization slot.
All right, travelers, we're now level 19. We've opened up our third specialization slot for our third skill. It's going to be shift, but first, we've got just over 300 health. We're still working on our resistances. Haven't found any necrotic. Still working on physical. Elemental's a little bit more important at this point. We are going to want some necrotic as we get to the end of time and move on to the next area. Necrotic's going to be a big thing, especially with, with physical and necrotic being low. You'll probably take a few deaths. Our dodge is still pretty low, still working on getting that up. And then for damage, not much for damage. Still haven't found a dagger. We might change the settings a little bit in the filter to find that later. But for the moment, no daggers have appeared. For skills, we got two more points in shurikens to throw in. We're going to throw both of them into ethereal blades so that we have that pierce chance. This will mean that we don't have to cast it quite as much. We've got three more points for acid flask. We're going to throw two of them into hydrochloric acid. So we'll have that 60% poison chance over the 20, which will be one of our only forms of poison chance until we get to passives here in a minute and then one point in lingering toxicity so the poison pool will last for five seconds instead of four and then for our third skill we're going to go ahead and dig into shift it's going to be a little bit but we're going to work towards getting the acid flask to both proc on our departure and on our arrival and then after that we'll build into having the shurikens automatically cast first as well but the three points we have here two of them are going to go into shadow recuperation and one of them into swift recovery this will also start to give us some of our mana back so it won't be as expensive for our mana when we shift quite often especially to dodge things and to start proccing the acid flask for us also on note the acid flask that gets procced in here will bypass the cooldown so you will still be able to use it manually just as much the shift will not actually proc that cooldown so you'll be able to get two forms of it which will really increase the poison damage that you do for passives we got eight more points we're going to throw three of them into guile for that dodge rating poison resist and then we need one more which we're going to throw into agility this is going to give us haste chance on hit it's a low percentage but when it does proc you'll be able to move a bit faster and then the last four points are all going to go into poison tipped so that we'll have that poison chance now we're not wearing a dagger yet but the moment that we do get a dagger we'll have that 40 percent extra poison chance that's not per dagger that's just going to be with one dagger so you don't have to dual wield them yet but hopefully we find a dagger soon we'll be in the end of time we'll gamble for one if we don't have one by then but as soon as you get one, you'll have that poison chance. You tap that 40% with the 60% you get in the acid plus hydrochloric acid pool, and you'll have a 100% chance. So you'll be getting poisons on the enemy every second with every hit you do, which is going to make sure it can start spiking the damage quite nicely. All right, I'll see you guys at level 25, 26 for the mastery choosing.
All right, travelers, I'm now level 24. We've been working on our resistance. We got up to 30% physical. We do have a bit more necrotic. Necrotic's going to be the big one that we run into along with physical after we leave the end of time and continue on through the campaign. So try and get your necrotic and physical up if you're struggling. Our dodge sits at about 23. We're still working on getting that up a bit. We're just short on fixes right now. Same amount of armor that we've had. And of course, for damage types, it's all basically the same. We haven't got into too much. We do have a little bit more damage over time on a few items. We're sitting at 64% for that. But it is time to choose our mastery. We are going to be a blade dancer. We're going to steal that. We're going to get the plus one shadow, the melee physical damage. None of those matter. It's the 15% more dodge rating. That's what we really care about because dodge will be our main form of survivability. So that will be nice for the passive. For skills, we got two more points for shurikens. We're going to max out the pierce chance with two more points in ethereal blades. Put us at 100% pierce. Then we got Acid Flask. We have two more points. We're going to split it up. We're going to put one more point in Lingering Toxicity, which is really nice for the gameplay, because since we're kiting all the enemies and they're following us, having those pulls behind us last longer so they do more damage, more poison over time, is really going to help us kill kill those groups that follow. And then one more chance, or one more point in Hydrochloric Acid for a little bit more poison chance. And what this is going to allow us to do is when we are standing in the poison pools, with our shurikens spinning around us, we'll get more poison chance on hit, which will help kill bosses and rares and things that we have a harder time killing. And then we got four more points for shift. We're going to throw two more points into swift recovery, one point into shadow slip, and then one point into elusive. And our next points will finally be able to auto-proc the acid flask for us. Once we get into those, it's really going to speed up the gameplay because you don't have to manually throw it and you don't have that two second cooldown. Instead, you'll shift every, every three seconds which will bypass the cooldown for Acid Flask, and you'll automatically get two of them thrown, so you'll get more damage. Of course, you'll get it every three seconds instead of two, but the biggest thing is that you don't have to stop. You don't have to stop to manually cast it. You just shift, they auto-proc, and that's when you start going zoom-zoom through the build. For passives, we got seven more points. We're going to go ahead and throw one more into Rogue Class, since we have to have 20 in there. That one point will go in Poison Tipped. We'll then go into Blade Dancer. We're going to throw five points into Cloak of Shadows for that Dex and that Glancing Blow chance, since it's always nice to have you know, a chance for some reduced damage taken. And then one point into Blood Servant's Blade for that global damage over time, and it gives us Poison Chance per equipped dagger. And we are wearing two of them now, which is really nice. We're going to continue building into that. We'll build through the center here, build, and then we'll get into the Weapons of Choice, which will give us that increased damage while dual welding. And then the big thing for Weapons of Choice, with two daggers, you get massive poison chance for wearing those. So as we build up and we get enough passive points into this, we'll eventually get into that 160% poison chance, which every hit that you do, having that chance, um, you know, since it's global, is going to be huge. And that's when we'll start absolutely destroying stuff. That's going to be it. I will see you guys at level 34 for the fourth specialization skill.
All right, travelers. We're now level 34. We've opened up the fourth skill specialization slot. We have just over 400 health. We're working on our resistance right now. You really want to have necrotic and physical. We just upped our physical a little bit, but necrotic is still going to do a lot of damage to you, and that physical really hurts, especially since we have such a low life pull. You're going to really want to bump it up. It does feel good when you are actually dodging, so if you get a lot of dodge fixes, try and build that up as well. Being above 40% would feel really good right now. We're sitting a little lower. And then for damage types, <clears throat> we have uh, about 70% damage over time. We did get a little bit of poison chance on one of our weapons, but that's about it. And then for skills, we got three more points for shurikens. We're going to go ahead and put all three of them into toxic tips. This is going to give us 30% more poison chance with each one of those projectiles. We're also going to want to build into more projectiles, so putting those three points here is going to give us open the fan of blades, which will give us two more shurikens every time that we proc it, which will be even more damage that we'll be able to spin out here soon. For Acid Flask, we've got three more points. We're going to cap out the Hydrochloric Acid. We're going to cap out the Lingering Toxicity. And we're going to put one more point into Contamination for that Poison Resistant Shred. Now that we have 300% Poison Resistant Shred, that doesn't shred 300% of your resistance. That does three stacks of Poison Resistant Shred, which each stack does 5% or 2% against players and bosses. So now against rares and enemies, we're going to we're gonna be able to do 15% more damage against them when we hit them with an Acid Flask. And against bosses and other players in the future, 6% more damage. So that's going to be really nice. Then for shift, we got one more point. We're going to throw it into sleight of hand. We should actually have five points here. The other four I've already thrown in. There's two points in arrival gift and two points in parting gift. This just made it a lot smoother to level, as all we had to do now was shift, and we were proccing the acid flask on both the departure and on the arrival. And then we have our fourth skill. You kind of have a choice between what you can do. You can do decoy if you want it or smoke bomb. You can do something else if you want, but I'm going to go with smoke bomb so we can get a bunch of those dust shrouds, which will help increase our survivability as it will give us that flat dodge rating and that chance for a glancing blow to reduce the damage we take on hits by 35%. So we're going to go ahead and put one point in shrouded in darkness and then cap out the rapid concealment so that every second we will get one stack of dust shroud, which will give us that 50, 50 flat dodge rating and that 5% glancing blow per stack. Then for passives, we got 14 more points. We're going to put three more points in the rogue class. We're going to use the three points to cap out the poison tipped so that we get that 80% poison chance because we do have a dagger on. And then the blade dancer tree, we're going to throw eight more points or nine more points into blood serpent's blade. This will give us a total of 50% poison chance per equipped dagger. We have two on, so that's 100% poison chance. And then we also get 50% global damage over time so we're going to be doing a lot more damage now that we have that capped leaves us with two points both of which are going to go into shroud of dusk this will give us more health so our ehp goes up and then there will be an eight percent chance every time we do take a hit even though we do have some dodge that will get a dust shroud stack now when you get the dust shroud stack what happens with that is it'll also increase your dodge rating so it'll be even harder to be hit so if you do get hit it has a chance to increase the odds of you not getting hit again and that's going to be it for this update. I will see you guys at around level like 41, 42 for the next update. And until then, we're just going to continue on.
All right, travelers, we're now level 42. Just a quick update on our path to 49 for that fifth specialization slot. We're still working on our resistance. At this point, you really want to have your elemental and your physical up. If you have a lot of cold and physical resistance, you won't die as much. For me, I was missing a bunch of cold, died quite a few times, but we still got through it and we continue on. We're sitting at about 9% armor now. Dodge is still at about 22%. We haven't built much into dodge. Um, at this point, having more dodge would obviously be more beneficial. So if you have a lot of affixes for that, definitely craft them up. Then for damage, we're pretty much the same with all the damage types. Uh, we got a little bit more poison chance on hit on one of our daggers. We're sitting at about 80% damage over time. For skills, we got one more point for shurikens. We're going to go ahead and throw it into Fan of Blades. This is going to give us two extra projectiles every time that we cast it, which is meaning that every time it spins around us or every time that we cast it, this could be two extra hits, which is going to be that much more poison on the enemies that we're hitting. So that's really going to increase your DPS. For Acid Flask, we got one more point. We're going to go ahead and throw this one into Lasting Sickness, which is going to increase the poison duration of all poison that's caused by Acid Flask, which is going to allow you to get even more stacks of it. Then two points in shift, both of them are going to go into sleight of hand so that we now when we shift there will be three shurikens that spin around us instead of only one. Once we get this capped out we'll have a total of five and that's going to allow you to not have to manually cast the shurikens as much. You're going to be able to just shift, two of your acid blasts go off and then you'll have five shurikens spinning around and they have a 100% pierce chance. They are using the skill tree except for the extra projectile portion of it. All of those are going to have lots of poison chance and so at that point you'll just be a little zoom zoom. You've probably already noticed at this point that the build has become much faster as you can just shift and kill everything along the way as it's kited behind you. Then we got seven points for smoke bomb. We're going to cap out the lingering fumes with five points for that maximum duration, one point in thick smoke for that slow stack, and then one point in generosity so that the starting area will be larger and it will be easier to stay inside of it there at the beginning. For passives, we got 12 more points. We're going to put all of them into the blade dancer. We're going to cap out the cloak of shadows with three points. Then we're going to throw five points into Shroud of Dusk. And this is going to give us even more chance when we do take a hit to get a Dust Shroud. And then, of course, it gives us more health, which is going to increase our survivability. We're going to throw one point into Flash of Steel. This is going to unlock the weapons of choice once we get up there. And then our final three points, we're going to throw them in a Suvon's Pact so that we get that 45 flat dodge rating and we have 45% increased damage while we're at full health. We'll continue to cap that one out. We'll eventually come back and cap out the Shroud of Dusk. But after we have one more point put in, which we'll put into a Suvon's Pact, we're going to go ahead and cap out the weapons of choice. So that's going to give you the biggest amount of poison chance besides idols once we build into it. If you are getting the rare affix for chest or helm that gives you poison chance per dagger equipped, those are also going to really increase your damage. Haven't had any of those drop yet, but that's going to bump it up. If you have an idol that drops with poison chance with the dagger, that's also going to increase your your amount of damage, or if you get the poison chance with shurikens, that also increases your damage. So all those you want to be looking for and putting them in as you have room. And I will see you guys at level 49.
All right, Travelers, we're now level 49. We've opened up our fifth specialization slot, so we're going to build into Decoy. For our resistances, though, we're just about capped on Elemental. We've gotten them up quite a bit. Our Physical's getting up there. Our Necrotic's getting up there. We are severely lacking in Void, but we're not running into much of Void right now. That won't be until we go to the Rayaha timeline, which is quite a ways away. So we got plenty of time to work on that. And then for our Armor, still at that 10%. That's not going to go up much. For Dodge, I would like to have more. Uh, so definitely be working to get increased Dodge. You can get that on both the helm, the chest, the amulet, and the boots. So that increased dodge rating is going to be huge on those ones. Try and get that. I haven't got those yet. I think the chest piece is the only one that has increased dodge rating right now for me. But if you can get that on all four of those, it's going to definitely build it up. Especially with every dust route that you get that adds in that flat amount. It's going to be huge. For damage, we're still sitting at about... 140% uh, damage over time. We do have quite a bit more poison chance. We're sitting at a total of 240% poison chance. That's going to go up as we get the passives of weapon and choice. That's going to jump up to about 400% for us, which will be huge. For our other defense, we don't have much endurance. We don't have any critical strike avoidance yet. That is something we'll have to start working in here soon. And then for glancing blow, we do have that 16% chance on hit to get 35% less damage taken for skills. Got two more points for shurikens. We're going to throw one into toxic tips for that poison chance and then one point into abrasive arsenal for that poison shred. For acid flask we got two more points. We're going to throw one of them into caustic concoction for that poison chance and then one more point into lasting sickness for that duration. For shift we got two more points Going to max out the sleight of hand so that now every time we shift, not only do we get the two acid flasks thrown without the cooldown, but we're also going to get five projectiles of shurikens. So it's going to make it to where you can shift a lot more and still get a lot of hits and a lot of poison applied on all of those hits. We got three more points for smoke bomb. We're going to go ahead and throw one point in Concealed and Carnage, which will give you that Crimson Cloud, which will give you Bleed Chance. We're not worried about that, but you'll take less damage over time, and right now survivability is kind of the name of the game because we have had some survivability issues, so it's just going to help take a little less damage. And then two points in Red Mist so that when we do get kills inside of Smoke Bomb, we will gain health, which will be helpful because we're not getting a whole lot of life replenishment right now. Hopefully we can fix that soon and get some Global Leech. We're really looking for the Bleeding Heart. We'll probably gamble for that in a bit. And then for our fifth skill we're going to go with decoy and then for decoy we're just going to build into the debuffs so two points in efficient construction give you some mana efficiency with it then we're going to put one point in sonic detonation so that sonic wave that goes out after you cast it is going to apply frailty and armor shred to all the enemies and then we're going to go with three points in warning sound and this will give haste to all allies that are also hit by that sonic wave which will most likely be you this will allow you to run around after you've thrown the decoy to dodge whatever it is that's hitting you and just give you a little extra survivability for passives, we got nine more points. They're all going to go in the Blade Dancer tree. We're going to put one more point in Shroud of Dust to cap it out. There will now be a total, a max chance of 32% chance every time you get hit for a Dust Shroud to form, which will give you that 50 flat dodge rating, that 5% glancing blow. Remember, that does stack, so it's definitely helpful to have. And then our final eight points, we finally have the Weapons of Choice. We're going to go ahead and max that out. We are wearing two daggers, so that will give us 160% chance to poison on hit. That's global, that's for all the hits, the acid flask hits, for the shuriken projectile hits, It's all of them are going to do it. It's going to really bring your damage up, and it's going to help you just clear a lot faster. That's going to be it for this update. I will see you guys at level 55.
All right, travelers. We're now level 55. We got almost 900 health. We're slowly capping out our resistances. We've got ourselves capped on fire, physical. Almost got the elementals up. Working on necrotic, and of course, the void is still lagging behind. But at least we have a little bit now. Haven't ran into too much of it in the fall of the outcast timeline. For the most part, we'll be staying there till probably around level 65. Uh, but you're not going to need a whole lot of void there, as it's not the main element. But before we move on to the Rayaw timeline, you're going to want to get some of that. We have about 12% armor. We're not really building into that. The dodge we are building into, still pretty lacking on that. Uh, we get a huge portion of that, though, when we do shift. Also, when we have smoke bomb out, uh, active, and then when we have dust shrouds that are being procced every time we take hit. That's where we're getting a lot of our dodge rating. Just standing in place, it is still a little low. We will build into that, still looking for an amulet, for boots, and for a helm and a belt that have increased dodge rating. We only have it on the chest at the moment, so that's that's why it's still a little low. And then for endurance, you did see we did craft up some endurance, so when our life does get low, we do take a little less damage, which is really nice. And then glancing blow is still sitting at 16%. As we get more passive points, we will go back to the rogue tree, and we'll build into glancing blow a little bit more. We'll be able to get that a little bit higher. We'll also be able to get health on a glancing blow, which will help give damage reduction on top of getting that 35%. You'll also get some health replenished, so that'll be helpful for stuff I have ability, but that's still probably about 20 levels away. For skills... Got one more point for shurikens. We're going to go ahead and throw this point into the abrasive arsenal for some more poison shred. If you want, you can start building into the duration. But for the most part, you can only hit the same enemy once with it anyway, so the duration, not a big deal. But you can build into that. For acid flask, we got one more point. Just going to continue on with the lasting sickness to get that poison duration up. If you want, I was going to build into the toxin for that extra chance, but I'm just going to save that for last, partly because I can't pronounce it and people are making fun of me, but whatever. For shift, we got one point. We got this one point we're going to put into the momentum. For this, it's going to give us that buff duration, and it's going to give you that, you know, that haste afterwards for that half second. Not a whole lot, but it is enough that once you shift, you can keep moving and get out of trouble. For smoke bomb, we got one more point. I'm going to continue on in the generosity to keep that starting area pretty big. That way it's easier to stay in. Remember, you do get a bonus. You do get health for every kill you get while you're inside of it. So when you're doing those beacons and you're doing you know, those those challenges and objectives at the end where you're staying in one spot, smoke bomb is very helpful for your survivability. And then we got nine points for decoy. We're going to go ahead and cap out the sonic detonation, cap out the warning sound, and then cap out the ear shatter for all that armor shred, ferality, and the haste that you're going to get. You can build into getting multiple decoys if you want. You can build into the dodge chance down below. You don't really care about the critical multiplier, but there's a lot of options with this tree. You can do whatever you want. I really don't even use decoy that often, so feel free to mess around with it, do whatever you want with it. For passives, we got six more passive points. For these, we're going to put them all in the Blade Dancer tree. We're going to cap out the Asuvance Pact. This is going to give us some more flat dodge rating. Also increases our damage when we're at full life. We're at full life quite often since we're always just shifting around. And then the last three points we're going to throw into Spellbreaker. Going to give you that frailty chance on hit. This is awesome. Increases your survivability because when we're hitting the rares and the bosses, it's going to reduce the damage that they're dealing to us. Also gives us some mana regen, which is going to really help because it does get kind of costly when you're sitting there just spamming the shurikens over and over and over again. That's going to be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 65.
Alright, Travelers, we're now level 65. We're still in the Fall of the Outcast timeline, just kind of expanding the web, really getting that good EXP bonus that we're getting. Have it moved on. You can, if you want, just go ahead, beat Abomination, do the three quest, and then move on to either the other timelines that you want. I'm probably going to stay in this one for quite a while, more. We might just go straight to 75 with it. You can do what you want. Here we got just over a thousand health. We're still getting our resistances up towards capped. Getting much closer. We did cap out physical. Our elementals are getting there. We do need a bit more void for armor. Still sitting at about 14%. That will get increased. We're going to build into the increased armor per shuriken projectile that's out so every time we shift or every time we use the shurikens this will actually be quite a bit higher we should be able to get up to about 30 percent once we put those points in here in a second and then for dodge rating still sitting at that 22 percent still haven't built too much into that but definitely want to get that up you definitely want to get to 50 percent plus dodge we do have our 100 percent critical strike avoidance that's basically been the main thing we've been working on from level 55 to 65 and then for damage types we have about 200 percent damage over time still haven't changed weapons we're waiting till level 68 at this point so we can put on the shitten daggers or chitten daggers if you will either way those will give us the poison chance implicit or the damage over time implicit along with the poison chance on hit i don't remember which it is then for skills, we got two more points for shurigans. We're going to go ahead and put both of these points into that bladed armor. This is going to give you that 20% more armor per shuriken projectile that's spinning around you. So we're going to have lots of those. Whether you shift, you'll have five of them. Or whether you manually use it, you'll have seven, I believe we have here. You can have up to nine or even higher if you have the gloves that give you plus two projectiles with it and then for acid blast we got two more points here we're going to go ahead and throw one point in lasting sickness to cap that out with the poison duration and then one point in the amatoxic pulls to try and get a little bit more of another poison type on there don't even ask me to pronounce that it's a joke two points in shift here we're going to go ahead and max out the momentum so that we get that buff duration for one and a half seconds. After we shift, we'll go ahead and have haste to really speed us along a little more zoom zoom in the echoes. Two more points in smoke bomb, both going in generosity so the starting area will be bigger. It'll be easier to be inside of it. For decoy, three more points. You can really do anything you want with decoy. I don't even use decoy. Haven't really been in a boss fight. We haven't done Orbis or Abomination yet. I'd probably use the decoy in there. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Either way, do with it what you will. I'm just going to throw these points into boom. You can really Really do anything you want with the skill tree if you really want to get more dodge out of it definitely build down into the bottom and get that extra flat dodge rating with active decoy then for passives we got 10 more points gonna go ahead and throw two more of them into the blade dancer both of them are going to go into spellbreaker to cap that out for that mana regen that frailty chance on hit and then the other eight points will all go into the rogue base class we're gonna put five of them into dodge and parry that's going to give us another 30 flat dodge rating but it gives us another 15 percent chance for glancing blow we already have 16 so this bumps us all the way up to 31 percent glancing blow so we'll be able to take that 35 percent damage reduction about a third of the time when we do get hit and then the rest of our points all three of them are going into duelist for that dodge rating increase as well as the damage increase which is really nice for the build and then going back to our character sheet just to show you we are sitting at that 14% armor, but when we cast the shurikens, you'll see it jumps us up to 22% now. So you get, you know, just a little bit extra damage reduction. The more flat armor you have, obviously the more that percent increase per shuriken projectile out, that's going to help you. And that's going to help you, you know, just survive more. But our survivability has been better so far. We have only died once since we hit the Monolith of Fate. And that's going to be it for this update. I will see you guys at level 75.
All right, travelers, we're finally level 75. We have just over a thousand health. We've got our resistances at a pretty good point. Still not completely capped, but still working on that. We got about 16% armor. This, of course, goes up whenever we use shurikens. We've got about 30% dodge. This also goes up every time we shift or use smoke bombs, so that's really nice as well. And then for damage, we got just over 200% damage over time, as well as just over 200% poison damage. For our skills, we got one more point for all of our skills. For shurikens, you can go ahead and put this point basically anywhere you want, but I'm going to put it in bladed armor for even more armor increase whenever we shift or whenever we manually use it. Then for acid flask, we got one more point. Going to go ahead and put it into amatoxic pools. For shift, we got another point. We're going to go ahead and throw it in sleight of hand to cap that out. For Smoke Bomb, we got one more point. This point you can put, again, anywhere that you want. But for me, I'm going to cap out Generosity. And then for Decoy, again, this skill I don't even use. You can swap the whole skill out. Or, in my case, I'm going to go ahead and put one more point into the Embedded Spikes, just so that we have some percent reflect. Or you can put it into Boom. Either one of these is something extra to put it into. Boom, something we were building into, but we're not really built into doing damage with it. The damage reflect, of course, you don't really have to build too much into. It's always going to take damage because it's got all of the mobs hitting it, so we can reflect and get a little more damage out of it. And then for passives, we've got 10 more passive points. Here we're going to go ahead and cap out the duelist with 5 more points there. And then we're going to build into Thief Guard with 5 points. This will give us more health, but every time we do a Glancing Blow, we'll also gain health on that as well. So we're going to go ahead and put 5 points in there. We're going to cap that out, and then we'll go back into the Blade Dancer tree as we get even higher level. Alright, that's going to be it for this build guide. At this point, the build has come together pretty well. You only got one more point for each skill. You still have 25 more passive points You know, as you level up and get towards 100. But for the most part, you can put them anywhere that you want. I hope that this build guide was easy to follow. Hope that uh, you didn't die too many times. It was a bit of a glass cannon build, especially there at the beginning. But once we got to the model of the fate, built into defense a little bit, we stopped dying. And our kills got even faster. We were killing quite quickly, and we turned into quite the speedrunner. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, stay safe, travelers, and have a good day.